Hello and welcome to a very special interview episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim, where we sit down with the star of Aussie film Bird Eater, Shabana Aziz. I'm Tim Ifland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk all things movies. We do. And in Bird Eater, a bride-to-be is invited to her own fiancé's bucks party. But when uncomfortable details about their relationship are exposed, the night takes a feral turn. Bird Eater is directed by Jack Clark and Jim Weir from a screenplay by Jack Clark and stars Mackenzie Fernley, Shabana Aziz, Ben Hunter, Jack Bannister... Clementine Anderson, Alfie Gledhill, Harley Wilson and Caroline McQuaid. Shabana Aziz is an actor whose TV credits include Network 9's Metrosexual and guest roles in ABC's The Letdown and Why Are You Like This, as well as SBS's The Hunting. She co-won Best Female Actor at Tropfest in 2019 and has been nominated for Best Performance at Stellar Film Festival in 2020 and the South Australian Screen Awards in 2019 and 2020. She's building quite the career with a bit of steam, isn't she? Absolutely. Aziz made her theatre debut in The Wolves and has since worked with the State Theatre Company, South Australia and Malthouse Theatre. Passionate about telling stories that push the envelope, Aziz has worked with some of Australia's most exciting new directors, queer creatives and culturally diverse teams of storytellers. Bird Eater is Aziz's feature film debut. In our chat with the actor, the delightful Aziz shares how equally excited and terrified she was to play Irene, how she hopes audiences will react to Bird Eater, how collaboration was key when it came to intimacy, and the classic film that brings her the most joy. Let's take a listen. The first time I saw Louis, I wasn't interested. He watched me for a while and then came and shook my hand. Shabana, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast and congratulations on Bird Eater. I have been, you know, marinating in this film for a couple of weeks since I saw it. Uh Now, reading a script like Bird Eater would see many actors, I guess, hesitate to explore the idea of being involved due to its heavy and challenging themes. I'm curious what initially drew you to the script and did you have a moment of hesitation as well? Like definitely had a big moment of hesitation. I was terrified Um, (laughs) because it's such an important thing to get, to get right. There's also no, no universal experience, but there's also so many patterns that you go, well, there is, you could get it wrong, but the stakes are so high. And I'd only really done comedy up until that point. I was shit scared. Um, (laughs) Honestly, it was the best script I'd ever read. Like it was such, such a good script. It was like I remember being at Miff when Birdie Did was coming out and an actor who'd auditioned for one of the characters and hadn't gotten it. And we shot over years. Like he remembered scenes, like specific scenes from it. It was like such a like visual, cinematic, like visceral script to just read. I think it like once you read a script like that, you're like, oh, better be me. Yeah, right. Yeah, you sort of manifest you being involved in it. Uh, when I take notes, when I watch films, most of my notes are leaning into the things that I feel, in this case, in Birdie, the things that unsettle me. And so a lot of my notes end with the question mark about what's happening. And, you know, as the truth unravels um, into something really disturbing, I imagine, you know, when reading the script for the first time, you have those sorts of moments of where is this going? What is my character? What's the truth behind what they've endured and all those things? A hundred percent. I had so many questions. I was so confused. And then I, I interviewed with three, four women who ex- either experienced this or a close friend has experienced this. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I talked to them, it made perfect sense, which is amazing that, that it captures Irene's experience in that way, because I do think that she is sort of not the focus of the film. And I think that's really important. Also, that's probably like the most important thing about the film is that it's not about Irene. We're not scrutinizing Irene. We're not looking at Irene. We're not focusing on her. We're not criticizing her. It's like the film is uninterested in that. Audiences may be interested in that. As a society, I think we are. We always look at people who are in this situation and go, why did she do that? Why did she? We never go, why did he do this? Why does Louis behave like that? We never ask those questions. We just go, why didn't she do this? And so the film is looking at the boys. Yes. And so I think that was something really interesting for me of going, oh, all my questions are answered and the film doesn't need to say anything more for me, mm. which was like fun. Well, I mean, the film as a viewer, it's it's as much about a mirror as it is a window into the experience as well. You mentioned about it's a film about the boys. I want to talk about the culture around Bucks parties and masculine identity, which are challenged and subverted in the film. How do you hope that 
audiences will react to what the directors that Jack Clark and Jim Weir were trying to say here? I think for me, the, the, the most important thing is that the focus is on the boys. It's interesting. The response to the film is so polarizing. Yes. People love it. Hate it. It's either a feminist masterpiece or a trite piece of misogynistic crap. It's like, you know, one or the other people are either passionately love it or passionately hate it. And I, I, th- and it's interesting that the, the, the way people react to it isn't divided by gender or there's, I can't figure out what's making people behave in what ways. But for me, I think the most important thing is that we're, first of all, we're asking questions, we're not giving answers. And yes. I think that's as a society, we're, we're at a point where we need to ask more questions. We're not going, this is the solution because every the system is is so designed to screw over women in this position that if we go, well, this is the answer without asking questions first, we get it wrong. And you see that in the move to criminalise coercive control and then the pushback against that from people who've gone through it who go, well, putting more women through the system is just another way for people to abuse them. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's one of the things. It's, we ask questions, we're not providing answers. And if you want to come to the film and feel good about yourself, it's probably not the film to do that with, you know, this is the film to come in and and then look at all your friendships and go, oh my God, what have I participated in? Exactly. It's about being self-aware and, and own those sorts of experiences that you find yourself in because it's as much your responsibility as, as someone looking passively in, but then becoming active. And what do you do with that information? How do you react to it? Um, How do you support the people around that are experiencing some form of abuse, whatever it may be as, t- as tangible or intangible as it may seem on the surface, it's there and you're aware of it. Like, what do you do with that information? It's, it's so true. But it's interesting of like the dist- distinction between what do we do for the people who are going through it versus what do we do for the people who are perpetuating it? Mm. Like who are, perpetuating it? that to me is more important because I think we, as a society right now and in the past, you know, we, we go, let's get her out of this situation. And usually it's her, but it's not just her, it's, it's people in general, but you, you go, how do you know, how can we prevent that from happening to them again? But really the solution is how, how can we prevent this person from ever behaving like that, feeling entitled to that, feeling allowed to behave that way? That's what will solve this problem. Yes. You know what I mean? And no one wants to scrutinize Louis. I don't see any reviews going, why did he behave like that? I see a million going, why did Irene do this? Irene was too passive. Irene was too this and Irene was too that. And it's fascinating because the film puts so much effort, cinematography, writing, the editing, the sound design into going, Irene is not interesting. We are not looking at her. We're looking at these boys. The boys come in, the sound goes up. You're engaged. Yes. It comes on, it's like, oh, she's back. Like, you know, you're meant to be interested in the boys. And no one, it's really interesting. It really is interesting. And you're right, the the sort of the polar opposites of people reacting to the film. And I wonder if people feel threatened by the movie is part of uh, why they have that reaction. I don't know. It's not an answer. It's just a feeling that I have. One of the things I want to talk about is intimacy, because in the film, it's explored along a broad spectrum. And Michaela Caratini came on board as the as your intimacy coach. What was that relationship and experience like collaborating on those important character moments in order for you to then feel safe as an actor? Um, She is incredible. Intimacy coordinators are worth their weight in gold and not just from a safety perspective, from a creative perspective. And interestingly, in my experiences, as much as it in, in, in a situation where it's a man and a woman doing heterosexual intimacy scenes, it way more serves the person in the position of power because that is terrifying. Like I know, you know, Mac played Louis and it was, I was receiving a lot of stuff, but he was doing it. And he as a person was like, how much can I do? And if he has, you know, if he has Michaela there, it's just so, he's so much more able to just, we're all able to play more. We're all yeah. able to explore more and, and almost offer more, you know, like I think we would have been too tentative. It was if she wasn't there. And I, I think intimacy coordinators help you explore more intimacy. And I couldn't imagine doing a film like this without one. Yeah. Because the, the sort of moments of intimacy that your character experiences at the beginning of the film take on a whole other meaning later in in the movie as well. So to have that, I don't know, is permission the right word? All that trust, that sort of between the trio of, of, of the three of you to be able to deliver in that space for then the audience. Well, me thinking back, oh, so that opening montage of your life as a couple sits really uncomfortably with me now as the truth unravels. So Jim, the directors are always part of the conversation and, and, and actually they were really great. I'm not, I haven't asked them about this, but it was really interesting of um, when I got the first script, there was no intimacy in it. And Michaela was already on board, I believe by the time I got the first script when I was auditioning and there was no intimacy in it. And then I had a meeting with Michaela and 
the other actor had a meeting with Michaela. And then we got a version of the script that had all the intimacy we were comfortable with. Wow. And I've never seen that done before. I usually see intimacy already in there and then you have to be like, I'm not comfortable with that. And then they take it out. So you feel you're coming from this place of, oh, I've already taken something away from them creatively. And Jack and Jim and Michaela did not participate and they were like not having that. They designed it. And I'm not sure how much they wanted to have if they'd gotten a different actor who was comfortable with more or less what it would have ended up being. But they they were incredible. The intimacy in this was a great experience. That's amazing. The intimacy was explored at inception with the cast in the film. And I hope that that is a, is a process that more writers and filmmakers explore because then it's a true collaboration representation of what the characters can then explore together but then you as actors as well to to deliver it in a safe safe place yeah i think it was great shabana i've so much enjoyed talking to you and i wish i had more time but i do need to wrap up and i've got one final question potentially loaded so um marinate in it as much as you need we're, we're all about celebrating the joy of cinema here at popcorn podcast can you recount an experience at the cinema or maybe a moment on film that brought you joy, which is a very different experience to feel when talking about Third Eater, but, you know, let's just end here anyway. All I can think of is all the movies that have made me sad. Um, Right. That's a common reaction to people that I speak to. You know what I think? I think Amanda Bynes' performance and She's the Man should have won a bunch of awards. I think that is a masterclass in doing uh, as much as you possibly fucking can. Yes. She so much in that movie and, and all of it rings true. Um, and I think as an actor, that's really fun to watch, but also as a person, when you can, I can say all of her lines in the intonation, she says them. And that brings me a lot of joy. I love I to quote. Love that. That's probably my answer that I'll regret as soon as we hang up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's the most unique answer. And I, I'm a huge fan of Amanda Bynes' body of work and that film is iconic. So um, yeah, great, great answer. Thank you so much, Shabana. And all the best for the release of Bird Eater in the coming weeks. Thank you so much. It's been lovely talking to you. Likewise. When I told the boys you were coming, they got so excited. As we already mentioned, Aziz is an emerging talent and she's already shown how unafraid she is to make confronting films with a film like Bird Eater as her debut. Absolutely fearless actor. She was delightful to talk to and so intelligent and so excited for the film to finally be released in cinemas because it had its debut over a year ago at the Sydney Mm. Film Festival. So just like the experience they had filming it over many, many months, Mm. it's taken a long time for it to be shared uh, in a release. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we talked more about the process that went into making this film because it was really, really challenging in in your Mm. interview with the directors. So make sure you check those out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you want to check out the film, Bird Eater is in Australian cinemas from July 18. As always, friends, thank you so much for listening. And you know we'll catch you next time. join in the conversation you can like us on facebook and follow us on instagram at popcorn podcast